Well, good evening and welcome to Darling Stadium. It's an absolutely beautiful night, May 2nd. We've got the uh, league, league leading Kickatan Warriors, the visiting team tonight against the Hampton Crabbers. Alongside me is Hampton Crabber head coach Bill Check and John Bailey, the coach of the Kickatan Warriors, and my color commentator, Bob Baster. I'm Scotty Tyson. Coach Bailey, tell us something about the Warriors. Well, we've got a real young team this year. We uh, we graduated 14 seniors last year, but we're off to a great start. The young players have really picked things up early, and we're off to, a, again, a good head start, 5-0 uh, and in the district. And Coach Check, how about the Crabbers? We've got an inexperienced team, uh, but we're coming along, and we expected to win a few more games than we did, and hopefully by the end of the season we'll take a few here. Well, let's have a good match, gentlemen. Here, Paul Hunt. Trying for the district title. Number eight, the Junior, Nick Adams. And number four, Junior, Paul Garcia. Number 16, a Junior, Justin Montgomery. The goalkeeper, Chris Coleman. Number 15, Junior, Stephen Woodard. Number 12, Sophomore, Ty Go. Number one, sophomore, Caleb Sparkman. And number nine, a sophomore, Brandon Miller. The Warriors are coached by John Bailey and the Crabbers by coach Bill Check. We do not have a national anthem this evening. Gentlemen, play well. All right, Scotty, here we are at Darling Stadium for another year of soccer, this year between Kickatan and Hampton. Both teams looking good this season. Kickatan perhaps looking a little more surprising so far. Uh, Kickatan looking for... No, uh, not expected because they lost a lot of seniors, Bob, but uh, knowing the tradition that they, they've had uh, and the great job that John Bailey has done, they seem to just improve year after year. And uh, they have a neat uh, junior varsity program that does a great job. Uh, Coach Cerrone gets them ready for the varsity level, and they've pulled up uh, five or six sophomores, I believe, to varsity, and, and most of them are making an immediate impact and playing an awful lot. So it's a surprise, I guess, from the outside, but knowing Kikatan and the way they hustle and play, it's not that big a surprise. They're doing well. Hampton, on the other hand, has lost a couple of close games, so I think they're a much better team than um, their record indicates. Uh, Bill Check said that they're young as well. I know he's missing... Um, one of his key players, uh, Ten Win, tonight uh, is not going to be starting or playing. Um, so that's a shame they lost him. But it'll be interesting to see what happens. They've taken the field and they're ready to roll. And over the last three years, uh, Kickapan has been uh, co district champions three years ago and then district champions the, the last two years. And having lost, I think it was 14 seniors last year, uh, they certainly look like a rebuilding year. It looks that way so far, 5-0, and oh, and uh, Denby also is 5-0, and oh, and we'll see Denby, uh, because that was rained out, we'll see them a little later in the season, um, pretty quickly, I think, actually. Kikatan's going to start it out. That's Epps in the center, That's alongside Ryan Curtis, and they'll do, uh, they'll do a lot of damage up front today. They hustle. They play well together. Um, looking forward to seeing them work together tonight. We have our WHCS meteorologist up in the booth with us, and he's informed us it's 73 degrees and there's almost no wind, so we have a perfect night for soccer. Well, fantastic. The girls played earlier, kick a 10, one there, and uh, we'll see if the boys can duplicate. That's Epps, center field, shadowed by Sparkman. Kick a 10, I'll send it back, send it to the outside there. Back to the middle again, and it'll take a minute to get everybody uh, fresh in our memory here, Caleb Sparkman for Hampton sends it up. Quinn Nelson fires it deep into the Hampton zone over the head of the defender. Quickly sent back out of the box. That's Knock Lee. Knock takes it wide, clears it up the sidelines, but redirected by Kikatan. That's Max. Hampton throws in, quickly stolen. That's number 15. That's Woodard. Excuse me, 15 for Kikatan, Mike Walters. Peterson sends it back for Hampton. Here comes a nice run by Stillwell, deep to end line. Beautiful cross, just barely out. 
Great Scotty, uh, by Adam Stillwell. Scotty, each year you and I do these matches, we end up giving sort of a shoe award, and I, I think that uh, young Mr. Walters is off to a fine start with those orange things. Absolutely, and I always thank the players after the game that have the brightest shoes because I uh, tend to get their names right more often, and I butchered his name by calling him a Hampton player earlier, but uh, we'll get it right from now on. Great shoes, Mr. Walters. This ball's sent deep, a little overlap run down there. That's Fenn. Fenn crosses a little too strong, a little stout and out of bounds, and Hampton will restart with a throw in deep in their own end. Tries to bring it out. Quinn Nelson plays some tough D. They call the push early, and they like to get the boys' games under control, don't they, Bob? Well, they do. If you let the boys get uh, out of check early, uh, the game can be nothing but one foul after another as the game goes along and also can end up with injured players. Uh, the, the previous game we saw just a limited number of fouls and nothing like a yellow card, but the boys' game can be a lot different. Absolutely, and I know they played a tough match during the Winter League, so it's almost like they're seeing each other for the second time, and that's always a little more physical. Bo Bennett makes a nice run down the right side. Hampton player taking one for the team there. That was Stephen McCrickard. That had to hurt. Actually, no, it, Stephen McCrickard was the original number nine, Bob, and I think they changed that on the... Yeah, the roster we had had uh, several people sharing the same jersey number, so we're doing the best we can here. Yes, that was Brandon Miller, Bob. My mistake. Well thrown in, Walters steers it towards Bo Bennett. Hampton brings it out. Again, Walters sends it up towards the left side this time. Kick a tan on a charge. Ball sent back. Good defense to slow down the play. Ryan Curtis is in no hurry, sends it deep left. And Hampton clears it out. That's number four, Paul Garcia for Hampton. He had a nice game the other night. I got a chance to watch them play Bethel. Bo Bennett with some good defense. Sends it out. Hampton will restart with a throw in. Number five, Paul Hunt. And as we go through the game, Scotty, we're going to try to mention something about what these players do other than soccer. Uh, we'll let the game get settled for a while, and then we'll begin introducing the folks that are watching to all the players on the field. All right, that'll be great. And sends it back, sends it out. Kickatan will start with a throw in, and these definitely can work into quick scores. Nice touch there. Sent opposite field. Ryan Miller will probably restart this with a throw in. He's got Adam Stillwell working the right side of the field. Walters heads his way. The throw goes to Stillwell. Back to Miller. Miller will have to hustle and does. Hampton sends it to the outside. Number 15, that's Stephen Woodard. Kikatan brings it back. That's Dean Epps. And Hampton will go with a restart. What do we know about some of these Hampton players, Bob? I know I've heard the name Caleb Sparkman a few times around the halls at Kikatan. I hear he's a pretty good player. Well, Caleb's a sophomore. He's, it's his second year on the varsity. He's also a wrestler. In fact, he was district champion at wrestling. He's got a GPA of 3.0. All right. This ball sent into Kikatan's end, first time tonight. Ball goes out, that's Hunt sending it out. Kikatan will bring it back in. Stillwell's gonna make the throw. Kikatan likes to overlap a lot, I notice, Bob. You, you know, sometimes you look up and the deepest player on the right side is Stillwell, and you look down and the next thing you know it's Curtis or possibly uh, Zach Fenn. Well, that certainly makes it just about impossible to play a marking defense. Excellent effort there, over the top. I think that was Dean Epps. It was, and it was, uh, through the uprights, but they don't give him any credit for that. But he'll have another chance. Um, with that overlap running, it's got to be difficult to mark. And I know I watched uh, Hampton play Bethel the other night, and they, as soon as um, Bethel was anywhere inside, let's say 35 yards, they were very tight man-to-man -man defense. Well, Dean Epps is a load to mark uh, up front for Hampton. He, he, uh, he can take quite a pounding and stay upright and, and score goals uh, for the Warriors. It's going to be a, a, a tough assignment for their sweeper. Okay, Miller goes down but continues to fight. Walters goes over the top. He's going to work it until he gets it. He does, takes it away from. I got to scratch out that other number nine, Bob. Number seven, that's Knock Lee. Knock Lee's got great speed. Did some neat things in the game the other night. That's Sparkman. Sparkman sends it back to Lee. Lee looking for a runner on the left side. Can't quite get it there. Still well, good defense. He'll pop it up at midfield and knock Lee. He'll head it into the kick at tan end, and Quinn Nelson will return the favor. Pretty move by Stillwell to the outside, Bob, and he's young, isn't he? 
He really is. Uh, he's, he's a new player, but he's off to a fine start. Uh, he's a sophomore. It's his first year on the varsity. He also runs cross country. He was honorable mention to the all district team, and he's got a GPA of 3.3. And I was fortunate enough to have him in class, and he's a, a real, real nice kid. And while we're on the Hampton players, I want to mention uh, uh, Knock Lee, uh, who you talked about earlier as a senior. It's his fourth year on the varsity. Uh, he's a member of the NHS, National Honor Society, Spanish Honor Society. Scotty, he's got a 4.34, which makes him the class valedictorian, and I'm proud to say that he's going to attend the University of Virginia. Wahoo! Wahoo wah. <laughs> Ryan Miller's going to bring it out right side in time to, so that I don't have to tell any Virginia jokes. We'll leave that alone as Miller takes it down. They keep it on the right side and happen pretty much collapses that rush, uses the sideline. Ryan Miller goes down and grabs his ribs, it looks like, well, Bob. He went down in a hurry. Well, Ryan was hurt earlier and played on, and I think he's been hit at the, the same place again. A little break in the action. Maybe we could go over some of these. I know uh, Dmitry Kornachek. Uh, we haven't been able to say his name yet, but... Uh, well, he's a senior. It's his first year on the varsity, and we had some people in the last game who transferred from other states to play for Kikatan, but Dimitri came to Hampton from the Ukraine, where he was on a soccer all-star team, and despite the fact that uh, English is not obviously his first language, he's got a GPA of 3.36. Fantastic. Somehow I don't see you and I going to the Ukraine doing as well. No, I don't. I have trouble going home and doing well. Looks Ryan's like going to make it off the field rather slowly. Uh, I didn't notice the substitution that came in for him. Looks like a shoulder uh, as Ryan goes off. Could have been Stephen Griffith maybe that entered the game for Kikatan. And Stephen's normally uh, a starter, I believe, for Kikatan. Probably isn't a senior, is he? Now, today is senior day, uh, as you're mentioning, and both coaches are going to try to do what they can to get the seniors out there on the field, and the seniors will be honored at halftime. Ryan is a senior, and Stephen Griffith is a junior. That's what I thought. Nice ball by Steven. Sent up. Epps makes the stop and drills it into Knock Lee. Nice play by the Hampton defender. That ball sent outside to Steven Griffith. Enters the game and quickly gets involved. Number 15 for Hampton sends it up. Stolen by Kikatan. That's Walters. Walters with a great touch and a nice run. That must be Curtis. It is. Knock Lee will send it out of bounds and Kikatan will restart with a throw in deep in the Crabber zone. Griffiths is on the receiving end of that. Curtis is now going to send the ball across. Stopped by the Crabber defense, and Crabbers will try to bring it back out to no avail. Stillwell was right there to send it back in, and we sent it out, and now they'll try a goal kick to get it out of there. Ryan Curtis has uh, seven goals for the season. He's having a very nice year. This will be a corner kick, Bob, and we saw... A beautiful corner kick earlier in the girls' game. It went directly to the far post, and she headed it back to the other post, and it was a neat goal, and it looks like Kikatan's got something set up big time as they head into towards the goal here. Nice left foot, but sent out. Epps is right there at the top of the box to send it back in, and Sparkman deflects the ball wide. Bo Bennett running to take it. He'll let Curtis have that one. Now Bennett, little left foot touch, back out. Curtis to restart. The Crabbers are packed way back in their own end. They've got uh, nine players plus their goalie uh, almost inside the box. And they really need to get some depth and get it out to midfield to get their offense started, don't you think? Absolutely, and the, and the trouble they've had is when they send it out, just like what just happened, is all there are out there are green shirts because of the amount of white shirts in the uh, box. That's their goalkeeper, Chris Coleman. Chris Coleman's a junior. He sends it out midfield. Big hop, but Quinn Nelson's there. He and Sparkman will go body to body. Sent back, Bo Bennett. Will try to turn it back to the middle and does. And a big clear. Beautiful ball right to Walter's feet. He's going to look to switch left side and does. Nice leave. Good run down the left side for Kikatan and a nice ball. Just out of the outstretched leg there. Paul Kirby defends for Hampton. Boy, that was a nice little uh, consecutive pass. Work by the Warriors there just fell a little short. 
Good throwing, and that ball goes out. And the defender on that was Paul Garcia for Hampton, Bob. Paul is somebody I've known since he was a very little boy. In fact, Paul's sister, Ariana, is my daughter's roommate at the University of Virginia and has been for the last two years. Uh, Paul is a terrific student. Uh, it, he's a junior. It's his second year on the varsity. He also swims and runs cross country. He's a member of the National Honor Society and has a grade point average of 3.36. And once again, you slept, swept, or, uh, snuck in the Wahoo mention. Every time I can. We'll get a lot of that Virginia press today. Are you paid by them at all for the publicity? <laughs> no, I, I, pay, I pay them every year, many <laughs> yes, checks. Yes, you do. <laughs> You're allowed to say that That's as often right. as you want. Walters <laughs> will take this down the left side. Stops, nifty move with the orange <coughs> shoes. Right back up, and Hampton tries to go the other way. Bennett settles it, sends it to the outside. Long centering pass by the Warriors. Stopped by Hampton, number nine. We still don't know who that is. That's Brandon Miller. Kikatan's going to take it all the way back and uh, try, and they have succeeded in bringing Hampton out of the box. Uh, but we'll see if they can bring it back down the field. And Fred Vogel is the sweeper back there, and I'm sure he's going to stay alert somehow because there is some good quickness to this Hampton team. And if uh, somehow we get complacent and uh, forget about them, they can get behind Fred. So I hope he stays sharp back there as he normally does. Little push off by Kikatan. Hampton will send this out. Nick Adams chooses to give that up to uh, Paul Garcia, who sends it forward. And once again, Stillwell is right on the spot. Caleb Sparkman trying to do something. Bo Bennett takes it away. Stillwell to Walters. Kikatan trying to split him. Walters has got some people running left. Whoops, hits his own man, coming back the other way. That's number five, Paul Hunt, and he sends it a mile, and this is what I was talking about. You really don't want to let anybody fall asleep is they're going to keep somebody up high all the time and try to spring him in a 1v1 situation. That's Ty Go, and I know he scored one or two against Bethel in the, in the same way. He's a freshman. It's his first year on the varsity, and he just earned the Crabbers a corner kick. Yes, he did, and uh, we talked earlier about how you know, sometimes all it takes is one or two, Bob, and, and you may only get a few opportunities. We'll see what Hampton does with this one. Actually, an excellent cross, and he rams that ball off the goal post. A beautiful left foot by Ty Go. That was within six inches of being upper 90 goal, even though Hampton has possessed the ball maybe 10% of this match. That's all it takes is the one, one big run, create that corner, that set play, and if you've got the timing down, it doesn't take long. And when you go up one nothing and you're young like Hampton and you've been in so many close games, I would imagine that immediately they'd give themselves a, a much bigger chance, wouldn't they? Well, I think that's right. And uh, Hampton appears to be right now planning on relying on the counterattack. And so far, it, it seems to be working. As a coach in games with that you think you're going to win, my biggest fear is always not being able to put the ball in early because the longer you let the other team play without putting a few behind them, the more and more confident they get. And uh, it, it can get a little scary. And I would imagine Kikatan's probably looking ahead a little bit. Well, that would be a dangerous thing for, th thing for them to do. I know the Denby game is looming ahead for them, but uh, uh, they certainly need to win all their matches along the way if they're going to try to repeat as district champions. This ball sent all the way to the box. Nice header. Out comes the keeper, but can't get there. And that ball's sent away, but again, with all the crabbers in the box, it leaves Bo Bennett with about 20 yards worth of room in which to gather that ball and send it the other way. And there's a harmless header over the cage. Goal kick for Hampton. I think you and I were expecting this game might be, uh, shall we say, overly physical. And it hasn't been played that way so far. This is good soccer. It sure is. And we hope it stays that way because these kids are quick and they're strong. And when they start to get real physical, people do get hurt. And on senior day, there wouldn't be anything worse than that. Quinn Nelson, nice stop left foot and a nice touch to keep it in play. Bo Bennett has shifted over to the left side of the field. He'll send the ball back to Vogel, and Vogel fires it out. Nice one-time header to the left side line. Kikatan is really doing some nice things out there. He's going to work that up against Hunt. Hunt takes it away, and Knock Lee comes to assist. Kikatan again. A lot of room in the middle of the field for them when they get the ball. A little breakaway. Stillwell with a beautiful touch, and oh, he hit the goalpost and missed it. For some reason, he went right foot. Bob, I thought he was just going to cannon that ball in left foot. I think he thought he had more time. He made a beautiful move to beat the keeper, but the defender was right on his back, and I don't know if he felt that. But I, he's going to get another chance. That was a very, very pretty move to beat the keeper. 
I know he wants that one back right now. He does, but he's all right. He'll get it back. He's a hard worker. All right, Kikatan brings it back out. That's Fenn on the left side. Hampton will restart with a throw in. Looks like Sparkman. I'll tell you what, he doesn't need those orange shoes to uh, get in the picture. Walters is a hustler. He seems to be around the ball an awful lot, Bob. He really does. He's been flying all over the middle of the field so far and, and keeping the ball in his team's end. Here comes Vogel. Sent it back center. Crabbers are trying to get some space here, Scotty. They really have been packed back into the Kikatan 18 for much of this first half. Yes, they have. And uh, I believe they're starting to realize they've got to push out a little bit. And again, it's all about confidence at the beginning of the game. When they pack 11 in there, they're 10 in there. Uh, that's sort of the message that they're giving out is we're going to try to keep this close. And now, as we see, they've had some chances. They just missed a goal. And they're starting to push up and say, let's play our game that we practice every day and see how it works. So we'll see what happens. Nick Adams for Hampton. Ball goes back to knock Lee. Lee sends it up the right side. That's number 12, a speedy Ty Go. Ty Go's going to run, and Bo Bennett stays with him step for step and waits for a little help. Vogel takes care of that. Hampton will restart deep in the kick at tan end. And with guys, it's, we have Jessica Bradner on the girls' team who definitely can throw it a mile. But with boys, these restarts down at this end, Bob, these throw-ins are almost like corners, aren't they? Well, it is. He's going to throw it right into the box. Look at that. Throws it right at the post. That was harmless, but that, with, you put a head on that ball, and that's a goal. And I noticed they moved up. They've got a defender that's uh, very, very tall, and they moved him up there, and he just didn't quite get there in time. Uh, but that's going to be their key. He's coming all the way back now. In fact, Kikatan's really a man up without him back there. That's number 15, uh, Stephen Woodard. And uh, he should definitely be the mark when they have those set plays. As you can see, Woodard just got back, and he's winded. So he's going to be the one in the box that they go to on those plays, and somehow they uh, overthrew him a little bit there. Number five, Paul Hunt for S Hampton gets it taken away. Scotty, this game has a marvelous flow. There have been not only very, very few fouls, but almost no restarts. Both teams continue to possess the ball uh, beautifully, and, and the game is just moving along nonstop. Yes, it is, and it's great because it's uh, getting a lot cooler. It was a lot hotter for the uh, first game tonight, uh, but the temperatures drop significantly. It's still in the 70s, as you said, but it just feels a little cooler. And these boys can run all day. They're in shape, no doubt about it. It's going to make it tough for us to get our player bios in, though, with the, the way <laughs> this match is going, but we'll give it our best shot. That's right. I'll take a breath anytime you want. <laughs> Well, we, we need uh, some change of possessions, uh, out of bounds, goal kicks. That's not happening, so we're going to follow the action. <laughs> That's right. Unlike baseball, we don't have the luxury of uh, three balls and two strikes. Yeah, I've been doing uh, some softball games, and it's uh, pretty darn easy to uh, take your time and play some music between innings and relax. This is just nonstop, and that's what makes soccer fun to play. You don't get the breaks, and you don't have to stop and wait all the time. You just keep on rolling. Of course, that's why you and I get the big bucks from Channel 46 for doing soccer and field hockey. Absolutely, and I'm waiting on the check from last year. Still hasn't <laughs> arrived, but it's a lot of fun. Get together with you and the cameraman, Mr. Braxton, is wonderful. Scotty Bowers down at 46, and, uh, you know, one of the parents of one of the boys a year or two ago said that they really, really appreciated getting this on TV, that it was some nice uh, footage that they could take and put together a tape and send it to uh, some college coaches. So. Uh, it's a great opportunity for the kids, and they do. Uh, one of them becomes player of the game on each team, and today they're going to be honored, the seniors, at halftime. And, and uh, it's nice to get all that on TV, get a little coverage for these guys. They work hard, and they deserve it. And Bo Bennett takes over the ball at center field. Sparkman runs by that. That's senior Epps sends it through and sort of a whiff, but they get away with it. Nice slide tackle over there, number 10. That's Ty Wynn. Ty Wynn is a senior. It's his first year on the varsity. He's a member of the National Honor Society. Uh, he's got a grade point average of 3.95, which makes him 14th in the class, and he's off to Old Dominion University. Bo Bennett comes up limping, Bob. He took a knee to the uh, thigh, it looked like, um, and I don't think he's going to be playing in a few minutes. He's going to need a break, it looks like. He's still on his feet. In order to get a stoppage of play, he needs to go down. Um, or they need to send the ball out, which they uh, politely did. Caleb Sparkman for Hampton. And generally when a kick of tan player's down and Hampton sends it out to stop, what happens after that on that well, throw? Well, kick of tan will normally give the ball back to Hampton for the courtesy of doing that if kick of tan does, in fact, have the throw in here. That's sort of a soccer tradition. We'll see how that goes. 
That's Travis Ferry over there. And, in fact, and that's exactly what happened. Bad. Gives it right back to Hampton. That's the way it should be. Kind of a good thing because <laughs> either he or us would have looked real bad had he thrown that to a kick at the hand player. Yeah, we did kind of set that up. <laughs> but Travis <laughs> knows the game. Uh, another young player for Kickatan uh, gets an awful lot of playing time. Uh, normally starts, I believe. And Travis is uh, a real good kid. Stillwell sends that ball back to Hampton. Little error back there, and Walters again with a nifty move at center. Nice defense by the Crabbers there. Sparkman will bring it back out. Well, the Crabber midfield, if you look now, the, the three midfielders have pushed out at least some. There's still uh, five to six defenders in the back, but it's not just the one lone runner up on top. Vogel leaves that for his keeper. Nathan Jones, who sends it all the way down the field, and looked like he almost hit Fred with that ball. Little push off. Kikatan thought it was going to go their way. It didn't. Scotty, we've got a thunder shower off in the distance here, and our meteorologist has left the booth, so I hope that uh, the weather pattern is still good. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good thing. As I grab onto the uh, metal window pane here. Good ball by Hampton. Quinn Nelson, who plays very steady back there, sends it all the way up to Dean Epps. That ball gets sent back Kikatan's way. Nice one touch. Great ball to Ferry on the left side. Little give and go effort there, didn't quite work, but that's all right. Kikatam retains possession, another give and go. Ferry this time right on the left sideline will send it up and through, and a great touch. Watch this ball stay in play. Hampton can do nothing but send it out at that point. Paul Garcia with a nice defensive play, and Kikatan will try to keep this momentum going. Travis Ferry, you've mentioned several times, is a sophomore. It's his first year on the varsity, and he's got a grade point average of 2.78. And here comes Kikatan working the corner. That's Ryan Curtis. Curtis sends it up and a little back pass right back to Curtis. Ball still moving around inside that box. Hunt tries to knock it out to no avail, and there's a solid kick, but wide and high. That's Griffith, and I believe Griffith scored uh, last night against Warwick. Looks like uh, once again Hampton's going to bring it in. Goal kick. First to substitution off the field for Hampton. Goes Caleb Sparkman for a well-deserved rest. He's had a nice first few minutes here. And Mike Walters went off for kick a tan and uh, still well um, sends it. Sorry, Bob. Shot on right. goal. On the field came Ian Taylor. Nice save by the keeper. Roll out. <clears throat> Griffith just took it right away. Well played. Vogel will probably switch fields and does. Bo Bennett awaits. Hampton player falls down. Bennett sends it through. Looks like Bo is recovered by Hampton. Looks like Bo is recovered from uh, being knocked down a few minutes ago. Yeah, rather quickly. I didn't even see him slide him back in. None of them like to be out ever. <laughs> they just all want to play. Well, there's a lot so of qualified people on the bench, nice and if you go out, there's no telling if you're coming back in. That's exactly right. Okay, the ball goes out of play. There's a sub in. We're looking for another one, I think. The other one was sent uh, deep over the Hampton goal. So we're waiting for retrieval. Here it comes. Bo Bennett will start the ball rolling with a throw in here. He's got Griffith waiting nearby. He may go deep with this and does. All the way down the sideline. Looks like Stillwell over there. Stolen quickly by Hampton. And that's number nine for Hampton, Brandon Miller. Miller sends it out to center. Little touch. Number 11 for Hampton. That's Josiah Peterson. Who is a senior. It's his third year on the varsity. Back down into the Hampton end. Played out again to center field. And Hampton's got to be getting more and more confident, Bob. We aren't getting any really a whole lot of quality shots. We did have the breakaway. There's a little push off. Um, possibly a little frustration already by um, Kikatan as if they came in overconfident, this is going to make them a little nervous. That was still well pushing off right in the middle of the field, and you can't do that because that's generally right where the uh, yellow shirt is standing. They don't miss those too much when it's right in front of them. Hampton will restart this from right in the middle, and that's that tall number 15. That's uh, Stephen Woodard we talked about earlier. Stephen Woodard is a junior. At off the kick of tan head to a Hampton player, but oh I believe gosh. it's offsides. I heard a whistle, Bob. I don't think it's a goal. Well, we have to We've see. We've got an arm up. I don't know if there was arm a foul. Arm is up, but I don't see a flag up. 
Well, the flag wasn't up, but I heard the umpire blow the whistle as the keeper and the Hampton player went up for the ball. Offsides. Must have been offsides. And, and again, it was called by that center official rather than the linesman. Goal has been waved off. Now, the ball went off a Kikatan player's head to our goal. Does that, would that neg negate an offsides? I didn't see the play clearly. Uh, I'm going to have to yield to the referee. I would never question an official, as you know, Bob. Oh, They're right. always right. Yes. Ian Taylor for Kikatan in the game. A beautiful header right back the other way, and they score. A fine save, but it looks like Travis Ferry was right there on the doorstep and banged it home. Looks like that came off Dean, Dean Epps. Absolutely. It was too much for the keeper to handle, and Travis Ferry was there for the putback. That was a major change in momentum with that goal being called back for Hampton, and then Kikatan scored immediately. Yeah, that was big. Kikatan goal. Scored by number six, Travis Ferry. Assist number seven, Dean Epps. All right, the game has started up again now. We've got the score at 1-0 Warriors. Throw in for the Crabbers. They'll send it out to a busy Caleb Sparkman. Of course, as you know, right after a goal is a dangerous time for both teams. Uh, neither team can rock back now. Got to play hard when there's a goal. I rode Quinn Nelson last year uh, about his gold shoes. I called them slippers. Uh, this year he's gone to a fluorescent green, which will help me immensely up here, and I appreciate that. Let's kick a tan playing. Nice left foot. Good save by the keeper. That's Chris Coleman. Chris is a junior. It's his first year on the varsity. Nice punt out by Coleman. Kick a tan sends it back. That's Epps deep left. He's working the defender and does a nice job of that. Still a little 1v1 over there. Trying to find somebody. Clear should be a corner for kick a tan. Dean Epps is a senior. It's his it second is. year on the varsity. He's a team captain. He's a member of the National Honor Society. He has a grade point average of 3.59, and he's on his way to Bridgewater College. Awesome. For Kikatan, I believe that's Zach Fenn that will bring that into play, and they seem to, they're doing the same thing they did on the other side, Bob. They line up at the top of the box here, and two or three make a run to goal. This time he chooses to go outside to Bo Bennett, which really shifts that Hampton defense, and that worked very well. Nice shot. Ball comes out. Kikatan again will restart. Throw in from Quinn, Quinn Nelson. Hampton's not pulling nearly as much as the girls did to try to keep them higher and out of the box, but on a throw in that wouldn't be effective anyways. Off a of Hampton head. Good save by Coleman. Hampton's defense starting to look a little tired there, Scotty, as they're all walking up the field. Yeah, they've been working. Ball played up in the air to himself and out. That was Griffith. Hampton will bring the ball back into play. Looks like Sparkman over there. And uh, once you mentioned the storm, the clouds seem to be uh, looming low and ominous over the uh, opposite bleachers. Well, fortunately, we are in the safety of the covered press box. Yes, we are. Not true of our cameraman who is bravely uh, weathering the storm. No rain. We'll be safe. It never rains on senior day. Ty Go working with Bo Bennett. Bo Bennett getting the best of it and does. Sends it back to Fred Vogel, who sends it harmlessly out. Midfield, where Hampton will restart there. Again, that's Sparkman for Hampton, heading back for the throw in. Got a, had somebody in the middle. Ryan Curtis came back to mark Mr. Miller. That's part of my confusion. I think Hickatan's number nine is Ryan Miller, and Brandon Miller is number nine for Hampton. I'll use that as an excuse. Well, my roster has two nines for Hampton, so you're doing better than I do. <laughs> That's true. Excuse number three. I'll use them all. Nice ball by the sweeper, but played to the opposite sweeper, and Vogel's going to let that go harmlessly through his legs. To kick a dance keeper, Nathan Jones. Jones sends that ball beyond midfield. Well done. Ball bounces around and sent back Kikatan's way. This is Bennett chasing. Going to keep that ball in play, I imagine, as a throw in there wouldn't be very advantageous. Pace of the game has really slowed down since the goal, don't you think, Scotty? I think so, and I think they're all charged up. It's senior day, and it's a big game, and uh, 
maybe it is a lot warmer down there. I know it's humid, that's for sure. And uh, they just came out uh, blazing. So they need to take a little break here. It looks like Hampton at this point is going to uh, rely on a strategy of knocking it up to their lone runner and seeing if they, they can get a counterattack started as they did earlier in the game. Absolutely. Walters is waiting patiently for the Warriors on the sideline. He's going to re-enter. Good throw in and a great clear by Vogel. He heads that ball almost to midfield. Nice job sent back in by Woodard. Once again, Jones comes up with the ball and sends it across the 50. That's Travis Ferry. Nice attempt, but out. Hampton will throw it back in. The Bob, whoops, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, the kick -a keeper, Nathan Jones, you've mentioned several times, is a senior. It's his second year on the varsity. He's got a grade point average of 3.43, and he'll be attending Thomas Nelson in the fall. All right. In fact, we had Thomas Nelson's president, uh, Dr. Shirley Pippins, on the field the last game with her daughter, the girls' varsity keeper, Andrea who played a great game both offensively and defensively. For she was, uh, she was a show. <laughs> I believe she scored. And she, she did. She also uh, provided some shutout work in the first half. She's great. Whoops, Nathan Jones decides to take a break. And then putts, punts it, and uh, Woodard's been on the field a few times. He doesn't mind leaving his feet for the ball. Ryan Curtis, great touch. He's got... Ferry running down the left side. He's going to play a little one-on-one. -on -one. Nice defensive play to slow it down by number 17. That's Nicholas Batorek. Nicholas is a junior. Kikatan has subbed. That's Stillwell that leaves the game. Walters enters. For those of you watching the game, on the information we're giving on the players, all the players had information forms to fill out. And shall we say, the, the girls tend to list more things than the boys. Yes, they do. <laughs> some of the girls we went on for over a minute, and some of the boys we have not much to say beyond their names. <laughs> Must be a, a humble thing by the guys, because I know they're involved in a lot of things, and the, uh, they can't just do all soccer. And, and as you read earlier, didn't you, the valedictorian's out on that field. And, he is. Uh, so um, most so, of them do very well in very many things, and how they find time to do them all, I don't know. But uh, when it comes to listing them all, they, uh, they seem to struggle. That's all right. More time for play-by-play, -play, I guess. That's right. Quinn Nelson rises to the occasion, sends that ball to Griffith, sends it wide left. That's Ferry again. He's played very well on the left side. Nice little move and a quick touch. And again, knock Lee. He can play. Ball slowed down a little bit on that side. Griffith's going to let that one through to Quinn. Quinn Nelson. Lots of room to dribble. Sends that ball right side. Well done. Nice touch. That's Ian Taylor for Kikatan. Ball sent out. And Nelson will bring it in. He's got Walters in the middle. Taylor's going to make a little run to clear some room for Walters. Mike Walters is a junior. It's his first year on the varsity. He also runs cross country. And his grade point average is 3.63. Nice throw in, but cleared out by Hampton. Well done again, Bo Bennett. Sent back to Nelson. Nelson sends it down the right side to Taylor. Ball sent out, and Taylor will restart this time with the throw in. Here comes Sparkman for Hampton. Chased quickly, little push they get away with. That's Fenn. He sends the ball back, and Vogel one times it high to center field. Ferry leaves it in the middle. Ball sent over to the left side. That's Fenn. Kikatan is playing a very deep sweeper, uh, but because they only have the lone runner for Hampton, they're really getting away with that with no problem. Isn't that right, Scotty? Yeah, it is. Uh, I think that's his only job. He's just got to keep track of uh, Ty Go, and he knows he's fast, but uh, he's got Bennett there to help if he needs it. But uh, Jack seems to be in full command so far. This is going to be Ryan Curtis. Uh, this is one where you obviously you can try to score from here. It may be Ryan Curtis, actually. There's three of them there. A couple of overlaps, and I was right somehow. Just wide of the net. And Ryan Curtis is a senior. It's his third year on the varsity. He's a team captain. He's been on the second team all district. Also plays varsity football. His grade point average is 3.36, and he's off to James Madison. All right. The Dukes. The Dukes. We have called a fair number of colleges today in these two games. We sure have. 
How far west did we go? I think we had an Arizona State. We went State. to Arizona State, and we went to a Cornell College in Iowa. We've had schools all over the place today. That's right. Washington University in St. Louis. That's right. That's Woodard. Woodard sends it down, and again, there's Bennett. Closely marking tie. Kick a tan will come back. That's Taylor. Taylor sends it up high. Nice touch by Knock Lee. Kick a tan will head that ball out, and Woodard will throw it back in. For Hampton, that's Peterson, number 11. Hampton retains possession on the sideline. Number five, Paul Hunt to throw it in. He throws it backwards. Might not have been a wise choice, but it turns out to be nice crossing ball. And again, we had a little knee to knee there. But everybody looks to be all right. Ferry sends it up to Nelson. They played together for a long time. Those two, they're young, but they've been playing together for a long time. Knock Lee, who's playing center defender for Hampton, I'm guessing is the smallest player on the field, and he is absolutely fearless and fast. <laughs> that he is. Ferry on the outside, waits for the run, and a well-timed ball to the corner. Beautiful stop and let the defender go by. Back to Ferry. Ferry touches it into the circle. Knock Lee will fire it out, and Quinn Nelson will head it right back in. Well done. Good hustle by Stillwell. He sends it outside to Taylor. Stillwell, nice little leave there. Loses his footing. Sparkman the other way for Hampton. Stillwell doesn't give up and takes it right back. Little shove, no call. Nice back pass. Stillwell again. Contain, retains possession. Sends it to Walters, who lets it go to Ferry. Very a nice leave, and he's going to work that left sideline. Now he's got a lot of room, taking his time. Pretty ball. Working very well with Curtis. Curtis out to Griffith. Griffith, easy ball into the middle. Epp sends it out to Taylor, and Hampton clears. But again, we see that open space out there, which is going to happen when you pack the back, and I don't know if it's the wrong choice either because Kikatan certainly is controlling and if you don't let him get any shots and wait for that one chance Bob uh, it may come and you get a 1-1 game at halftime and that's a scary 45 minutes or 40 minutes in the second half. Well it'll be interesting to see how long Hampton holds this shape I mean it's certainly succeeding in keeping Kikatan from scoring much they do have one goal and, and missed one good chance but it is greatly limiting Hampton's offensive chances. Ferry with a beautiful cross and the defender for Hampton almost put it in his own net but very nicely sends it over the end line. Or was that a kick -a tan player? Almost looked like the Hampton player kicked it out. Must have been the kick -a tan player. Whoops, I was right. Corner for kick -a tan That looks like still well over there, Bob. And we're down to two minutes here left in the first half. And again at halftime, we're going to honor both the Hampton and kick -a tan seniors. And award the first uh, Chris Tromley scholarship. We did that during the girls' game, and Bristol Bowman was the recipient. Very proud, I'm sure, as uh, there was an awful lot of love and still is for Chris. And we should also mention the first game we awarded players of the game, and we'll do that again in this game. And for a kick -a tan I picked Selena Cerrone as the player of the match. Heather Jones was the player of the match for Hampton. She was a goalkeeper and then came out of the goal and played uh, very, very well at midfield. Did a little bit of everything for Hampton and came up to receive her award as did Selena and seemed like a very nice girl. Stillwell again from the corner. I think uh, Coach Bailey would be excited with a goal here. <laughs> One goal games are no fun to coach. Looking for the big cross here. Kikatan's all over in front of that cage. A beautiful header and a goal. That, that is a Ferry back again. of a goal. That was Travis Ferry again, and that was outstanding. And, and Coach Bailey talked before the game how he's young, but uh, it, those were two young players right there that looked like they were very old. That was tremendous play. Still, well, we had uh, a moving halftime uh, presentation there of the first Christopher Tromley Memorial Scholarship. As many of you know, Christopher Tromley lost his life uh, in May 2002. He was a soccer coach at Kickatan and a graduate uh, and a soccer player in that program. And the community has donated over $20,000 to a scholarship fund. And today, Bristol Bowman for the Kickatan girls team and Dean Epps for the boys team each received $1,000 scholarships, uh, thanks to everyone who has supported the Tromley family. Uh, and now we're back to soccer. We're, we've got a score of 2-0 at, uh, at halftime. 
and Kikitan has had two very nice goals, missed another possibility. Hampton's offense has been limited the way we see it up here in the booth, I think, Scotty, by the fact that their midfield has dropped so deep into the defense. So what do you expect to see this half? Well, I expect them to probably not start quite as deep as they did in the first half, Bob. Uh, I don't. I know now that now that it's two nothing, they know that the uh, they need to score. There's no doubt about it. And and if they've looked at the past, Kickatan has yet to shut anybody out in the district. They um, they are five and zero, oh, but um, uh, to each opponent, they allowed a goal or two. And uh, the largest margin of victory in the district's five to one so far. So if Hampton can come back and get a quick one, and we know they've got some speed up front. Uh, this is a whole new ball game in a hurry, and Caleb Sparkman is uh, certainly not going <laughs> to slow down. Number 12, Ty Go has been uh, looming up front. Uh, Bennett's done a great job against him, but uh, you don't want to get slack, and you don't want to stop playing hard, and I don't see Kikatan doing that, but sometimes they get anybody gets overconfident. Well, that. I would certainly think that if, if one of us were coaching Kikatan, or I would think Judge uh, that uh, John Bailey told his team if they came out and get another one right now, that's going to put Hampton in a world of trouble. So I think we're going to see Kikatan with a mighty fast start. Yeah, absolutely. Travis Ferry scored the two first half goals for Kikatan. He's out on the field again, uh, right there on the uh, Kikatan's left side. He's marking Josea Peterson for Hampton. Uh, Travis has uh, done a great job all day. Uh, Ryan Curtis is up front again for Kikatan, as is uh, Dean Epps. And Kikatan may probably play a little more defensively at the beginning and see how Hampton's going to come out and play them as well. And it looks like we did have an injury in the first half. Ryan Miller went off to uh, have a shoulder looked at. Uh, he went down hard twice and went out and actually stayed for the senior day presentation, but now has gone off to seek some medical attention, so we won't be seeing him back. Well, he's tough, Bob. Let's hope uh, it's nothing serious, and we'll see after the x-ray. Quinn Nelson to restart for Kikatan, a deep throw to the Hampton box. Hampton keeps it alive. Sparkman. Brings it out. He's going one-on-one -on -one with Taylor. Kikatan sends it back into the outside, and that's fair. Our, our meteorologist is back. He uh, finds him quickly. Bennett sends it back in. Our meteorologist is back in the booth, Scotty. It looks like he is predicting the possibility of some rain here, so we hope we get this game in. Hopefully it's about 40 minutes out. That would be nice. We have a loose ball in the box gathered in by the Hampton keeper. That's Chris Coleman. Chris will punt it back out and send it midfield. Kikatan sends it harmlessly back in. Quinn Nelson now controls at the center. Defender slips. They send it back out and Kikatan will bring it right back in. Quinn Nelson again to throw. Seen an awful lot of time today. In fact, I don't think he's been out. I look at the past, Bob, since 1998-99. Uh, Kikatan had a 7-2, and 7-2-1 two, two record. Then in 99-2000, 2000-2001, and 2001-2002, they were uh, without a loss. So they've done a great job for a few years now. And uh, again, we talked earlier in the first half about rebuilding, but I, I believe this, this team is built. Well, to lose 14 seniors, even with a built team, is quite a blow. And uh, if I recall right, uh, they had the, the same fellow, Trey Ross, was District Player of the Year twice in a row. And not long before that was Jason Broski. So there's certainly been plenty of talent in this uh, Kikatan boys program. Yeah, there sure has. And it looks like it's going to continue for a while as the sophomores have played uh, particularly well so far in this game. And there's Ferry, one of them, and sends it to another one. That's Adam Stillwell. And he tries to get around the Hampton defender and does. Stillwell with a solid left foot. Kirby scores! What a great left foot. And the keeper, Coleman, came over to try to cut it down and sent it to the upper 90. What a great shot. I think the keeper thought that was going to be a crossing pass, and it looped in on him to the near post. It may very well have been a pass, but it was well struck and ended up finding a home in that net. Oh, no, I think he went near post. I think the keeper was anticipating pass, uh, as was I. That was a tremendous left-footed shot. I don't know if I saw an assist out there. Did you, Bob? I'm I sure think we would give. I think we would give that one unassisted. All right, we'll do it. Beautiful, beautiful play, and he did go one on one with the defender and and worked his way around. Kikatan goal scored by number 19, Adam Stillwell. Adam is trying to get back into the player of the game race here, Scotty. I think he has a goal and an assist now, if I'm remembering right. Yes, he does. And there's Epps, he'll send it across. Knocked back 
but right back in with Taylor for Kikatan to control for a while. Hampton hustles, but Kikatan will get the throw in from the right side. Well done to Taylor. Taylor sends it right back. They send it midfield. And Scotty, as far as player of the game, I took Kikatan's uh, last game and you had Hampton, so why don't we switch this time and you can have Kikatan and I'll take Hampton. All right, Bob, that'll work. Mike Walters for Kikatan sends it out to Bo Bennett and he'll send it all the way back to Fred Vogel who controls easily and has a lot of time. Sends the ball, intercepted by Hampton, but right to a Kikatan player and they send it deep. They're still well hustling for the ball. Quinn Nelson will settle it and send it back Hampton's way. It's Taylor on the outside. Nice ball to Epps and he'll take it end line. Still trying to control. Sent back out of the Hampton end. Bo Bennett hustling over on defense. Excuse me, that was still well. Ball settled out to Quinn Nelson in midfield. Quinn sends it all the way up, and this should be controlled by Coleman, or he may let it go. Nope, he's going to choose to punt it out. Notice the, even with lack of wind, it seems that the punts going from our right to our left have gone much further, but I don't see anything moving out there. No, but according to our meteorologist, there's a storm looming even beyond the one we can see. All right, well, it's got 35 minutes to stay where it is. Hampton sends it out. Kikatan has put a lot of pressure on early in this half. The goal made it nice to go up 3 nothing, and it doesn't look like they're backing off at all. So this could be a, could be a big game for Kikatan moving into next week. Next week they'll see Denby on the 5th. That's at 4.30. Denby's also undefeated this year. Uh, so that's going to have major implications to the seeding in the tournament. Um, and as we know, in this district, there's always uh, chances for upsets. Phoebus will play the next day, uh, and then we finish the season with Woodside. Corner kick for Kikatan. That's Stillwell again. Nice touch. Hampton clears just to the outside of the box, but not out. Taylor does some nice work, continues to hold the ball, and he sends it top of the box. Nice leave for Bennett. But Caleb Sparkman comes away with it. He sends it up to Hunt. And we've got a 4v1. Now they're way off sides. Vogel didn't seem to have any problem with 4v1 there, Bob. Well played. No, well, they couldn't pitch the ball off to the right because, unfortunately, the right wing was so far offside the play would have been stopped. And Vogel did a good job jamming the middle. And Kikatan now sends the ball back into Hampton's end where five or six crabbers await. Ball goes out off of Epps' foot, and Hampton will bring it back on the side. Throwing in the back. Oh, nice touch. We've got a, looks like Epps went down that time. Looks like he got hit in the lower back, but he pops right back up. Limping, He's, though. He is a tough kid. Big punt out to midfield. Hunt can't control. While we, we have a second, uh, Scotty, if I could, I want to thank uh, Scotty Bowers and Nathaniel Braxton and everybody at Channel 46 uh, for televising this match and allowing us to call it. Uh, this is certainly something that the players and their families uh, enjoy every year that we get the opportunity to do this. Absolutely, and we get to come up here and talk for a few hours and try to get better at it. We're working on it. Bo Bennett now controls. A little bit of defense there. But Bennett fights right through it. A nice touch to Ferry. And Ferry looking for his third. will pass instead. Ball sent out of their own end by Knock Lee. Big run now. Easily thwarted by Stephen Griffith. Kikatan sends it up to Bennett. Bennett a nifty little move. Still working the sidelines. Peterson wins that battle. But sends it out to Stillwell who leaves for Bennett. And Bennett will send it all the way back to Vogel. Kikatan will regroup. Quinn Nelson's heading to the right sidelines, Bennett to the left, so he's got a few options. He'll take his time, sends it back out to Bennett. Bennett, the senior, will send it up the middle. Oops, a little bit of a leave there, another miss, and Hampton's going to have to run back and get it, and they do. Scotty, you've called Bo Bennett's name repeatedly. He's a senior. It's his second year on the varsity. He's team captain, also on the wrestling team, and he's on his way to Bridgewater College. That's great. Bo Bennett's a great guy. Bo Bennett, you see around the halls constantly. Uh, uh, he's always smiling, and uh, he's very well liked in school, uh, a real good guy, and it's going to be uh, tough to see him go because the long hair is uh, easy to spot him out there on the field. He's always hustling. He plays just terrific defense. When they need to mark somebody, uh, Bo's usually the man that they put on him and uh, just does a wonderful job, and you rarely see him come out. He's a hustler, plays well back there. It's a nice combination, he and Vogel back there. 
for Kikatan. We're talking about the fact that Hampton has their valedictorian out on the field. Uh, the top student that Kikatan has on the field tonight is Max Seitz. Uh, it's his second year on the varsity. He also runs cross country and is team captain. He's also team captain of the swim team. He's a people-to-people -people sports ambassador. He's a member of the National Honor Society, the German Honor Society, the SCA, the Key Club, the Model Judiciary. He's an Eagle Scout. He has an incredible GPA of 4.13, and he has the full ride to West Point. Wow. Awesome. We wish him luck there. I know Max from working with him from the Model Judiciary Program when I supervised him as a lawyer, and he's just an excellent student. All right, Kikatan will bring it back out. That's Gri excuse me, Griffith will send it back in. Forgot we switched directions there for a minute. Hampton tries to work it out. Hunt goes 1v1 with Nelson and wins that battle, but Griffith comes to help with a beautiful slide tackle. He got all ball. Stillwell sends it in, and we're going deep. Taylor to the corner. Taylor sends it all the way across, and that one almost snuck in, Bob. Coleman tipped it just over the net. That Pretty was shot. A that was a dangerous shot. <laughs> Very dangerous, and we get a corner out of it, too, so we may see a repeat of the last kick. Looks like Curtis is going to head over to take that. You mentioned Stephen Griffith with that great slide tackle. He's a junior. It's his second year on the varsity, and he's got a great point average of 3.29. And it is Curtis. We'll put the ball in play for Kikatan. They line up at the top of the box. We'll see who will make the run here. Looks like Epps. Stillwell's going closest to ball. Again, they get up high in the air. Travis tries to control and sends it back, and we've got a call in the box, Bob. And it looks like it's <coughs> actually looked like it go might against have been a, Kikatan. Might have been a push on one of the Warriors. I think with a three nothing lead, it's going to be pretty hard for a referee to be giving a lot of penalty kicks to Kikatan at this point. Yep. We don't need him. Vogel's going one v three there, which is tough, but he wins that war, gets a push out of it, and now we've got a Kikatan free kick. Fred Vogel's a junior. It's his second year on the varsity. Here they come the other way. They're going to believe we'll give Griffith the opportunity to send this one Hampton's way, and he does. A ton. That free ball was won by Hampton, number 17, who is Nicholas Batorek. I believe we talked about him earlier. Paul Hunt tries to send it, and Stillwell sends it out for Kikatan. Substitution entering the game for Hampton. Leaving the game is Peterson. We're looking for a number here. Caleb Sparkman will inbound the ball. Little push off. Nelson looking for a call. Doesn't get it. Griffith sends the ball Hampton's way. Sent outside to Ferry. Ferry will control and take his time. What a beautiful split ball. Just a little far as Coleman comes out. Make the play. Good idea. Coleman sends that one out towards the 50. Griffith heads her back in, and Hampton will throw it in. Number five, Paul Hunt opts to let his teammate Stephen Woodard throw the ball in. Now, the nature of this game is so different from the girls' game. I would guess that in the first half, uh, Hampton drew Kikatan offside. See, in the girls' game, you could guess as well as I can, but it, I would say a dozen times. Mm -hmm. Oh, beautiful shot. Great save by Coleman off a beautiful header. That was Curtis. And a beautiful long ball sent in by Travis Ferry. Kikatan is just uh, not stopping their offense. No, they're going to continue to pound. And uh, that's what they work every day to do. And I don't see any stopping them. And I don't believe a substitution would help either. Because like you said, they're, they're loaded on the bench. And they're all hungry to play. Griffith will send this ball along for Kikatan, the last one he sent all the way into the Hampton box. He's got some close targets if he chooses. He's got Bennett on the left side, but he's going to bomb another one. And that works. Is that ball I thought was going to stop? Sent out, but off a Hampton player. So Kikatan will continue the attack, this time with Epps throwing the ball into Ferry. Ferry holds, sends the ball up. Another header, oh. and that's Curtis, and what a great touch. A beautiful cross from Ferry. And a great header from Curtis. They work really well together, Bob. They really do. That, I, that play had to be practiced. That looked absolutely lovely. And I think we're seeing some movement on the bench. Yes, that was a goal by a senior, Ryan Curtis. Kick a 10 goal. Scored 
scored by number 13, senior Ryan Curtis. Assist number six, Travis Ferry. Keeper change, I have no idea who that is. For kick it down? Yeah. Uh, they list three, so it's got to be Neil Wilson. They list, they list three keepers, and it's not Brian. Okay. Go ahead. Bob Kikatan's changed goal goalies. Uh, looks like Neil Wilson has entered the cage for the Warriors, who continue to control. That's Quinn Nelson, right out to the middle. Walters. Neil Wilson yeah. is a junior, Scotty. It's his first year on the varsity, and he's the son of someone I know well, Jim Wilson, who is one of the folks at Hampton Parks and Rec. All right. Well, I'm sure he had, must have something to do with the fact that this field's in great shape, and we uh, thank him for that. Well, Jim was the person that uh, helped organize the new soccer fields, the new soccer complex, uh, for which the, all of us involved in soccer thank him very much. I appreciate the work he does on our field hockey field as well. Bo Bennett, big cross. Keeper Coleman comes out and Epps goes in and no collision, thankfully, as they were both moving at a pretty good clip. Coleman will send it out past half field, but Nelson is right there as usual to send it back in. That's Taylor on the outside. Hunt sends it out. Kikatan will throw it in. Taylor for Kikatan. Whoops, we got a whistle. Substitution. And in comes Nate Klein, number eight for Kikatan. And uh, Nate's one of my favorites, Bob. He's Nate, a lot of fun to be around. Nate's a junior. It's his first year on the varsity, and he's also on the cross country team. And you'll be able to tell the cross country uh, effect as he, he can run forever. He's got great quickness, never stops. Uh, uh, just another one of those fun players to watch because he's always hustling. Scotty, since we've gotten up to 4-0, I'm going to see if I can get some of these uh, player bios in that we haven't gotten in yet. There's quite a few players I haven't mentioned. Paul Hunt, who you've called several times for Hampton, is a junior. It's his third year on the varsity. He's team captain. He also runs cross country, and, and he was 10th at the city meet. His grade point average is 3.61, and he's 19th in his class. Nathan Jeter is a senior. It's his third year on the varsity. Previously, he attended West Springfield High School and was on the state championship team. He's 28th in his class with a grade point average of 3.72, and he's on his way to Virginia Tech. A lot of those today. Go Hokies. I know it pains you to say that. but It, it, it does, but uh, <laughs> congratulations to him anyway. That's right. <laughs> Everybody's got to make their own choice. Max Seitz has entered the game for Kikatan as well as Nate Klein and also Jordan Excuse me, I'm sorry. The kick it in center mid sends it over the top of the cage. That's Walters. <coughs> Hampton will start it back out with a goal kick. Jordan Chris has come into the game for Kikatan. He's a young man I know very well and know his parents very well. He's a junior. It's his first year on the varsity. Uh, he's also on the swim team. He participates in Model General Assembly, Model United Nations, and he's got a 3.0 grade point average. All right, there's Nate Klein right there sending it outside to Walters, who sends it to Bennett, and Bennett will send it up line to Seitz, who just entered the game, and Seitz looks for Klein, and Klein's going to make a nice move and drill one, and he scores! Great goal by Nate Klein. It didn't take him long. I told you, he just hustles all the time, gets around the ball, and makes things happen. He's a lot of fun to watch. That was a great goal and a great pass to Klein to get it all rolling. That's Nick Adams throwing the ball in for Hampton, and he's going to send it back. They'll work the ball out of their own end quickly as they send it past midfield, but Bo Bennett's right there to send it right back in. Two headers in a row, and here comes number 12, the speedy tie go. Not quick enough as Bo Bennett works it away from him fairly easily and sends it back to Vogel, who fires it over the halfway point. There we go. There's Jordan Christ right there. Oops, a Hampton player gets drilled in the face by his own player. Obviously unintentional, but that looked like it hurt. I don't know. That's uh, Nicholas uh, Batorek that took the shot directly to his face, and he's uh, smiling now and holding his nose, but uh, that had to hurt. <laughs> I believe they're laughing about it down there now. Knock Lee was the uh, server of the ball. Jordan Crystal work it against Lee. 
Lee stops but sends it to the kick tan left side and just over the net and into the crossbar. I believe that was Ryan Cerrone that sent that ball. Ryan Cerrone is a freshman. He's the son of the coach for the JV team, John Cerrone. Uh, playing on the varsity team this year. He's quite a talented player. His sister, Selena, was the player of the game in the previous match. She's a senior for the girls' varsity team. Uh, Ryan is having an excellent season so far, uh, playing for the varsity. He's a freshman. Obviously, his first year on the team. He also runs cross country. A uh, member of the Key Club, the Spanish Club, Operation Smile, the Technology Association, the Model United Nations, Model Judiciary, the Drama Club, and despite all that, and he's a freshman, he has a 4.0 average, and he's 17th in his class. I don't know when he sleeps. I'll tell you what, that's fantastic and a big honor to uh, be pulled up to the varsity as a freshman. It's very evident that they've got an awful lot of talent up there, so they must think very highly of Cerrone to bring him up at uh, such a young age. And, and I tell you, when you play with better, you know, uh, higher level kids, you tend to just get better and better more quickly. And uh, that must be Mr. Bailey's uh, idea. And it. Uh, I'm sure will work. And with his father as the JV head coach, I'm sure he gets lots of coaching. Sight sends it across to the center, and up high goes Christ. Big save by Coleman, who runs it to the top of the box. Rolls that out to Hunt. Hunt will work it back. I want to mention another Christy freshman, Klein. if I can, uh, Scotty, Zach Finn for uh, kick -a -ten, whose birthday is today. It's his first year on the varsity. He also runs cross country. Uh, he plays on the ODP Boys State team. In fact, has played on that team in Barcelona. He's also a member of the Key Club. That's impressive. A little Spanish soccer. Chris hustles and wins the ball for Kikatan as they'll restart over on the sideline. Nate Klein will hustle over to throw it in. Well, in the previous game, uh, we had uh, several players from different countries, and here I think we have one from the Ukraine, if I remember correctly. Yeah, we sure do. That's uh, Dmitry uh, Kornichuk. Caleb Sparkman will work at center field, send it back. Chris hustles over. I think we had a nutmeg there. Uh, yeah, we did, but again, kick a tam won it, and that's Chris Hain, his first time in the game that I know of. And Chris has got tons of speed, Bob. He's also young. He's a sophomore, uh, number two. It's Chris's first year on the varsity, also runs cross country, member of the Latin Club and Honor Society, the Key Club, the National Junior Honor Society, and he's got a 3.44. I had to sub for his PE class one day and we played indoor soccer and Chris thoroughly embarrassed me on more than one occasion. That's not a good way to pass a class. Uh, no, I'm not his teacher, so he knew he'd get away with it, but he was, uh, <laughs> he was way quicker than I've ever been. So we'll see a lot more of him, I'm sure, in the green jersey in the future. That's Walters doing some nice work, sends it up to Sites on the left side. He's got Cerrone ahead, and he's got Chris in the middle. This ball goes back out to Cerrone. He works it back to Sites on the sideline. Sites lots of time, sends that back into Chris, who leaves that ball, we'll say, for Hain, and he falls down on the wet turf, I guess we'll call it. That's all right, he'll get it back. A Little bit of uh, ribbing from his teammates, I'm sure. Coleman throws that ball out center and Bo Bennett goes up against a uh, much larger Sparkman but wins the ball. Nate Klein doing some nifty work with his feet and head. He'll keep it down. He's got Cerrone over on the left side, chooses to go middle and out comes Knock Lee with a quick run. Hampton 4v2 now. Now three, 4v2 again. They'll continue the run. Bo Bennett comes over to clear that ball out. Had some help from keeper Neil Wilson, who was hustling out to get it. Bo Bennett, uh, honestly, Bob, I've, I've watched Kikatan for a while, and I don't know if I've seen as consistent a player. Uh, he just gets the job done over and over back there. I, last year, and uh, I want to even say the year before, I just he just stuck out to me as a outstanding player. Well, Kikatan has a history of having really fine sweepers, and when you start with that solid defender all the way in the back, it just builds from there. There we go. Sent the ball out to uh, Walters. A little out of Cerrone's reach, and Hampton will throw this one in. We're looking at about 15 minutes to go. I don't believe there's been an injury or a stoppage this half. Now, this game has uh, had more flow than any of the games we've called in the past. Uh, really very few restarts. 
And despite the fact that we were expecting uh, at the least a chippy game and at the most uh, a game that involved uh, a number of fouls, it hasn't worked out that way. That's awesome, too, because they really don't need to. They need to be healthy. We've got Denby coming up. Hampton's got four more uh, big games on their schedule, and uh, you just don't need to see anybody get hurt. It's not worth it. Cerrone sends it in the middle to Walters, who sends it right back. And Hampton sends it out. Whoops, we get the other call. Kick it to It must have gone off of Cerrone or somebody there. And they're giving the ball to Hampton, who will throw it in on their right side. That was Adams who gave the ball up. And a deep throw, well done. It's Sparkman, but again, Bo Bennett finds his way to the ball, sends it back to Vogel, who's been equally as strong in the back today. Sends that ball outside and finds its way over the line. Sparkman now to throw in. He's got a few runs being made by teammates. Nice stop. Ball gets into the box for the first time in a while. Let's see what Quinn Nelson can do. He'll screen until the ball harmlessly leaves the surface. Quinn Nelson is a sophomore. It's his first year on the varsity. He also wrestles and runs cross country, and he's got a great point average of 2.54. Sites sends the ball through. Hampton wins that. Caleb Sparkman, nice touch. Excuse me, that was Hunt to Sparkman. Kikatan sends it up and out. Hampton will throw the ball in. Sight stops to talk. Got to keep on playing in this game. Bo Bennett to throw in for Kikatan. And he throws the ball deep. Sent right back at the Warriors. Nate Klein hustling. He'll work until he gets it and does. Trips, but no problem. Ryan Schmidt, who we haven't mentioned yet, Bob. Now we have not. that ball sideline for Kikatan, and here comes Chris. And Chris is taken down, and we'll definitely get a call on that. Maybe we'll talk about uh, one of these players after this free kick. Let's see what Kikatan does here. They're up 5 nothing, I believe they are. Looks like Chris Hain might take this one from the top corner of the box. All right, Kikatan's lining up just outside the six-yard line. Hayne, nice chip, up high. Chris goes up for it and scores. Looks like it might have ended up going off a Hampton player, but we'll give it to Chris up here as he certainly sent it that direction. Nice job, beautiful ball by Hayne and a finish by Chris. Kikatan's front line at the moment, Scotty, is last year's JV front line. Uh, all moved forward and playing well. Well, you can tell uh, right from that goal that uh, this isn't the first time they've been together. That's for sure. Kick a ten goal scored by number four, Jordan Christ. Assist to number two, Chris Hain. You had mentioned Ryan Schmidt. Scotty is a junior. He's first year on the varsity team. He participates in Key Club, Model United Nations. And he's got a great point average of 3.69. A lot of good students on the field today for Three, both teams. 369, that's awesome. We joked earlier about how I would have had to add mine up to get a 369. I don't remember that being a joke. <laughs> well, I tried to make it one. Those who know me know it wasn't. Hayne with a pretty move. Chris is going to take it down the right side. He's got a couple of Warriors in the box. Can't quite get it there. Good play defensively by Garcia, who's played a nice game over there. Bo Bennett will settle this one down being chased quickly by Ty Go, Probably go back to Vogel and does. And Vogel sends it left footed to midfield and here comes Hampton, Ty Go, little touch, nice job and a header. That's Nathan Jeter. And the Warriors send it out. Nice move by Hain, but it had already crossed the line over there. I think we're gonna duck the rain, Bob. I think we are. The current score is 6-0. Uh, We've got about 11 minutes to go. Uh, Kikatan has looked like a team that uh, can win the district championship, wouldn't you say, Scotty? Oh, absolutely. They really, they, they look like they were clicking today. Uh, just made some beautiful combinations. Uh, the set plays were working. Um, they, they've got to be in great shape as they've got a deep bench. Um, and if and Bailey probably won't hesitate to go to these players on the bench, there's uh, what seems to be more experience than it shows, as you said. Uh, uh, you know, Mr. Deaver came over to tell us that was last year's JV's front line that's on the field now. So um, they may not be experienced at the varsity level, but they're certainly very experienced playing with each other and in a very successful JV program. That that team, Jar JV at Kikatan, I don't think has lost more than a few games over the past five years. So they're solid. 
Bo Bennett's going to work this ball deep in his own end, send it sharply off Caleb Sparkman, and we'll have a goal kick. I guess it'll all, go, it'll all go to that Denby game on, what is that, Monday, Bob, I believe? It's I'm not sure what day it is, but that, that's going to be, uh, that, that would be Monday. Uh, that, that's going to be the big game of the, the district season. And that'll be at Riverview, up there across from Menchville High School, I believe. Those are nice fields. Ball sent back, and that's Garcia and Christ. Garcia for Hampton wins that battle, sends it up. Bennett's hustling, and Sparkman... We'll send it by him. Seitz takes over. And here comes Nate Klein. Nice touch to Seitz. Seitz all the way across to Chris. Good idea. Chris still controls down at the far end, as far from our booth as we can get. Coleman comes out to make the play for the Hampton Crabbers. And we've even got the sun out a little bit to finish this game, which is nice. I want to mention again that today the uh, first annual Christopher Tromley soccer scholarships were awarded to two Kickatan players in memory of Christopher Tromley. For the girls team it was Bristol Bowman and for the boys team it was Dean Epps. Each received a $1,000 scholarship. We've got the flag up. Looks like Kickatan ball quickly rethrown. Nate Klein sends it up to Cerrone. Cerrone with a beautiful no-look pass over there to Seitz. And a well-played defensive move by uh, Paul Garcia to send it out. Once again, Klein to throw it in. Paul Garcia is also a tremendous swimmer, uh, state championship meet level swimmer. And uh, when it came time to move my daughter Allie into her apartment last fall, uh, Paul did the heavy lifting and I did most of the supervising and I really appreciated it. That's always best. Bo Bennett to throw this in. Well done. He's got Chris making a run. Sent out again by Hampton. This time Sites. Nope, he'll let it Bo handle this. Bo looks like he's looking middle and is. Almost ahead by Chris. Hampton breaks out. Kickatan's got a few back. Little touch there. Scott, I also want to thank uh, Jeff Deaver, who's been kind enough to run the clock today for both games. Jeff is the father of Megan Deaver, the preeminent uh, player on the Kickatan girls team, and it's good to have him up here. Yeah, it sure is. And uh, we talked in the girls game about uh, her unfortunate uh, broken leg, but uh, she'll be back. And, and uh, we talked how, about how wonderful a player she is and her speed and, and, and what she can do with the ball. And, She's going to do all of it again next year for Kickatan as a senior, and we uh, definitely are missing her uh, big time on that Warrior team. Although they continue to play well and win, she's a huge part of that team. Hampton sends it out. Kickatan will throw it in deep in the Hampton end. It looks like it'll be Chris Hain. Kickatan continues to run. You know, you put some guys that aren't uh, always on the field out there, and they certainly aren't going to slack off at all. They're going to work extremely hard and you can see it's got to be driving Hampton crazy as we just keep coming back at him and the legs are all fresh that's for sure and uh, that ball sent uh, wide of the target Seitz will throw it in and Kickatan's got a lot of wide open runners he found one that's Nate Klein good hustle well played we again want to thank Channel 46 for televising this match and also when we give our player of the game awards uh, we have a t-shirt and an award uh, to be given to a player from each school that we choose as players of the match. Uh, so again, thanks to Channel 46. I'm sure that all of the players and their families really enjoy this broadcast. That was 10 win for uh, Hampton who made that slide tackle, Bob. I, uh, I've noticed he's played a very good second half up there at uh, right full. Good uh, foot to foot action there. Kickatan sends it deep. Jordan Christ, deep right corner. He's got someone in the middle. That's Cerrone, but can't quite thread it through. Cerrone still works hard to get the ball back. Nice effort. That's Garcia. Cerrone cuts him off. Well done. Out to Hain. Hain plays with a little bit. Back to Cerrone. He's got Christ and he's got Walters. Walters is going to find it and looks like he's going to rip one. That was 10 win. I believe we got a push in the box, Bob, and we may have a penalty kick and a card. The and card goes correct. to Garcia, I believe, number four. And the PK, I assume, 
We'll go to Mike Walters. Mike's done a great job today. He's played a super game at midfield. Hasn't had a lot of opportunities to shoot as he's been distributing the ball really well. But he, I believe, is going to take this PK. Well, nope. Sorry about that. It's going to be Chris Hain. And Mike Walters, of course, wins the uh, shoe award. Absolutely. Finest footwear. Chris Hain, the sophomore, to line this up. Chris Coleman, the keeper for Hampton. Beautiful ball. He drilled it, Bob. He really did. That gave the keeper no chance to do anything. That's, uh, I guess you could call that the lower 90. Yeah, you're really at their mercy. You've got to guess one way or the other, and even if you guess right, a ball like that is going to get by you. Now that's Great six, shot by Chris Haynes. Six inches off the ground down the post. Uh, you're not going to save that very often. That'll go along with his assist. Kick a 10 goal scored by number two, Chris. Hey. Chris appears to have quite a uh, cheering section over there in the stands. Yeah, he can make some noise. Hampton was offside, I believe, on the kickoff. Well, Scotty, we're inside four early. minutes, so it's, uh, it's time to start thinking player of the game. We can announce a mismatch whenever you want. And again, uh, you choose the player in the green, and I'll choose the player in the white. And we'll honor them with the... Uh, shirt and the award that has been dropped off for us to give out by Channel 46. All right, I'll be happy to do that, Bob. Give me a minute here. Paul Hunt sends it into the box. Kikatan sends it out, and that's Walters. Walters works it to space and has some room and some time, but that pass gets picked off, and here comes Hampton to try to get that first goal. And a pretty pass and a shot. Far corner, they score! Well, I'll tell you what, it came awful late, but that's what I had seen when I watched him play Bethel, Bob. That was Knock Lee, and he sent it to Ty Go, and they did that against Bethel a few times, and uh, that was a beautiful pass and a beautiful shot. And we've got a, an update of when the girls' game will be shown. On Saturday night, Bob. So... People will be seeing us tomorrow night, I hope, or listening to us, and they'll see some good soccer. Why don't you announce that on the PA after you announce the goal? Ball goes harmlessly out. Kikatan will throw in. It's Sites. He throws it into Walters. Walters has a few players. Cerrone making a run, and Walters clears that out, and we'll have a goal kick. Kick a tip. Hampton goal. Thank God it was off. Hampton goal. Hampton goal, scored by number 12, Ty Go. Assist number seven, Knock Lee. Yeah, tell them what's going to be on TV. The girls' telecast will be on channel 46 tomorrow night at 4 o'clock, and the boys will be shown at 7 o'clock. Channel 46. All right, we're back. I think it's time to do the players of the game, Scotty. We're down to two minutes. All right, I can do that, I think. I believe I'm in charge of the Kikatan player of the game. Is that correct? You are. Uh, Bob, I've selected number 10, uh, senior defender Bo Bennett. Um, you know, it's 7-1, to one and obviously offense has been uh, tremendous for Kikatan, but uh, Bo has been outstanding, uh, as usual, back there, and, and as steady as can be. And uh, I just feel like it allows the offense and the midfield to work when they know they can take some chances and make some runs because of the strength that's behind them. And uh, it just is real evident that Kikatan has a lot of faith in, in Bo. And uh, Bo works really, really well back there with Vogel. But uh, Bo Bennett today is my pick for player of the game for Kikatan. I think that's an excellent choice. And I'm going to choose for Hampton, Paul Hunt, who has been nothing but solid in the midfield, has never slowed down, played a hard but clean match the whole day, should be very proud of his play despite the score. Still hustling now even though we're inside two minutes. So I choose Paul Hunt as the Hampton player of the match. And I agree as well. He's done a great job. Round the ball an awful lot. Bo Bennett sent that ball to the keeper. We got a late whistle. I think he may have stepped out of the box. It looks like the call. That's where he's pointing. So Good would, pick up. So we'll have a free kick from just outside the box. Is a, this uh, direct? That turns into a handball outside the box. So therefore it is direct. Kick a tan. Looks like uh, Mike Walters will take this one or Sites. They line up both of them. 
in an area where they could take it. Walters is going to take it, and he just missed. <laughs> nice shot. Right around the wall. That was pretty. From up here, it looked like it was going in. No harm. <laughs> well, at halftime, we certainly didn't expect this offensive explosion in the second half, did we? No, we really didn't, although they had put a lot of pressure on Hampton, and sometimes uh, we had discussed the key is that second and third goal and uh, get them uh, believing that, that you might be as good as they thought you were coming into the game. And as long as it stays 1-1 one -one or 1-0 one or 0-0, zero -zero, the confidence continues to grow, but the opposite occurs, I believe, when you get that second and third. It gets a little deflating, and, and then Kikatan pretty much just unloaded their bench, and now they have nothing but fresh legs out there, and they're extremely talented. It's not a huge drop-off, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, there's nothing, uh, nothing more powerful than fresh legs when you've been hustling and you're getting a little exhausted. Not a lot of Hampton substitutions. They've only got, I believe, four on their bench, and two of them look like they have their uh, jerseys off and aren't ready to come in as there's probably an injury problem. I also want to thank uh, coaches John Bailey and Bill Check uh, for all the cooperation we got today uh, for the boys match and in the girls match uh, Maria Scott and uh, George Welch who were just terrific in uh, helping us prepare for this match. Yeah, it sure does make our job easier, Bob. Bo Bennett tries to work that ball through, gets stopped, but he's always got Vogel back there to help him, sends it that way. Now we've got a late and whistle. That's unless the match, that's the I game. believe. That's the match, Bob. I sure enjoyed uh, doing the game with you. This was and, a great uh, match. We look forward to seeing it on television. We thank again Channel 46, and we thank all the fans and the players. Two good, clean games today. On behalf of Channel 46, we are announcing players of the match. We ask that these two players come up to the press box and receive their awards. For Hampton High, Paul Hunt. For Kickatan, Bo Bennett. And don't forget, on Monday, as this will be shown on Saturday, on Monday, May 5th at 4.30 at Riverview, will be Kickatan versus Denby. Both teams undefeated and fighting for that district title. Should be a great game. 4.30, Riverview. Kickatan versus Denby for first place. Once again, thanks everybody for making this fun, making it easy. Final score, Kickatan 7, Hampton 1.